I bet you want to know how nice this rotary encoder is. Let's twist it to the microphone. Hey guys, M5 Dial has been on my shopping list ever since the launch. I spotted it on the social media of M5 Stuck. Uh, as I follow them because they have incredible devices like uh, those M5 stack cores that I own and I adore. And there was a one thing that was stopping me actually from pulling a trigger, the lack of time. I knew as soon as I gonna get my hands on one of these, I gonna be distracted and I would like to play with it because I had some awesome plans. So I decided not to get it and I didn't. But there is one here because someone at work did and I couldn't resist so I borrow it for a weekend so I could play. That way I can actually make a video, play with it and prevent myself from spending too much time on it because it's gonna definitely be worth of your attention. So let's talk about it. A while back I covered the release of M5 Stamp, one of the smallest ESP32 development boards available on M5 Stack website. And this isn't precisely the one I want to talk about because I don't have it at hand with a USB Type-C port, but M5 Dial, this orange thing in there, is an extension to M5 Stamp with a USB Type-C port. This humble development board lays at the heart of M5 Dial and provides it with a CPU and all the connectivity features. Now it is attached in there via header, so you, if you have M5 stamp already, without headers you can solder them and uh, you can just replace them if you need to. But when you're buying M5 uh, dial, you're gonna obviously get one with the M5 stamp embedded into it. So what exactly is the M5 dial? As the name suggests, it's a rotary encoder wrapped around 1.28 inch touchscreen display, a color touchscreen display. That's the, by the way, it's a 240 by 240 TFT display with a nice touch interface. Apart from adding the physical utility of the rotary encoder or knob, that's a rude way of saying it, there is also a button hidden under M5 designation at the bottom. It's not the easiest thing to actuate, which might be a benefit or not, depending on how you're going to use it, but it's there for you to use. Another button that you're gonna find at the back is the reset button in case things go wrong and you want to reset it. Now, if you flip the uh, dial to the back, you'll see that the dial can be mounted using this ring. That ring allows you to pinch the dial between a mounting plate uh, and hold it in place. At the back you'll see that we have two ports, port A and B, those are I square C ports for extensions, so you can attach any device from the M5 stack store because they offer a lot of different modules and expansions, so M5 dial isn't an exception here, and additional uh, power in. So this is two pin DC port that supports the range of voltages from 5 volts to 36 volts. If you take a screwdriver and remove the M5 stamp from the dial, you'll notice that there is additional two pin header hidden underneath it. It's very tiny and this one is to provide the built-in RTC, real-time clock, with a backup battery. Obviously, if you just want to play with it like I'm playing, you can still use the USB Type-C to power M5 stamp, which is going to power the dial for you and program it that way. What I didn't know, mostly because I didn't want to get myself tempted and I didn't read the product page all that careful, I kind of assume what it is, that there is a hidden RFID reader and you will be able to read RFID tags using 1356 MHz. So that can be very, very handy. Overall, it's a very well-made device and honestly, I'm quite impressed with the size and how good it feels in my hand. M5 Stamp brings all the perks of ESP32-S3 to the table too. So you have Wi-Fi, which is 2.4 GHz band, A has Bluetooth, and you'll be able to take advantage of increased flash, which is 8 MB, and the processor, which uh, basically have two cores up to 240 MHz. I guess it's time to answer the burning question how good that encoder is. 
And honestly, just listen to that. So the encoder has 16 steps. An actuation of it is reinforced by the built-in buzzer, which gives you that extra little feedback. I found that dial to be relatively smooth, but each step is nicely actuated, so it feels nice and I always feel in control of where I want my settings to be. Overall, I really, really like it and I definitely would recommend this as a rotary encoder. The only thing I could think of to improve this design would be to have replaceable bezels in case if you want a different than orange color and maybe have the ability to add a different uh, knob dial plastic thing so you can have a different feedback on your hands and that would be great. But maybe that's going to be a feature for the M5 dial too. At first, I wanted to figure out what exactly I'm dealing with, how does it feel in my hands and everything, so I loaded the uh, demo firmware onto M5 dial and proceeded to check things out. The screen itself is quite bright and while cranked up to the max, it will be easily visible in a full and direct sunlight, which means you will be able to use it in many different scenarios. It also offers pretty good touchscreen experience as long as you don't try to touch things at the very edge. One of the disadvantages of having this basal is that uh, and there is a small gap that you kind of, it's very hard to get your fingertip into, so you'll have to bear that in mind when actually programming a user interface. Just make sure you have a nice safety margin for touch interface design, otherwise you might not be able to touch things near the edge, I guess. But on the default settings, selecting different options and activating with the bottoms were pretty obvious and it works pretty nice to the point when I kind of kept forgetting that this is a touchscreen display and I can still do stuff by pressing on the screen. By default, the built-in buzzer is set to provide you with two different tones depending on which direction you're uh, rotating your knob and I found this to be actually quite nice. It provides you with that extra feedback to let you know what you're doing. I quickly went through all the options and I went to test the RFID reader. And here is a thing that you probably need to know. While the demo screen tells you to place the tag over the display itself, I found that not to be precisely accurate. Where you need to place, in my case, small tag, was between 1 and 3 o'clock on the dial itself because that's where the color seems to be located and this is where I get uh, quite fast and accurate readings from my RFID tag. So this is something to bear in mind. If you're gonna design an interface that's gonna allow users to scan their cards, make sure you kind of point it in that direction of the device, in that corner of the device. Once I stopped playing with the demo firmware, I had another idea. I wanted to open UI Flow and try to figure out what can I do with it. Obviously, my first idea was to kind of recreate something similar, a thermostat that I could implement and add it to my DIY home smart heating system, which you can watch it in a corner if you're interested in how I, how I resolved that. So overall, it took me approximately 40 minutes in UI Flow to cobble together something that was very basic. Obviously, I didn't want to spend too much time on it because I was on limited time and I just wanted to see how hard it's going to be to get the input from the rotary encoder, send it to my Node-RED server, obtain the information about the current temperature and display that everything on my screen. So overall, within 40 minutes, I had a rudimentary system that I could use to set the temperature. It wasn't perfect, but I was happy in terms of what I could do with it. And while I was exploring UI flow, I also remembered that I had this. This is Core 2 by M5 Stack. Uh, the video is in a corner. And I've used that to create several different smart automation panels. That also took me about an hour to create. And I've noticed one thing. Some of the UI elements available on this device weren't present on the M5 dial, which took me by surprise because they share similar screen and the touchscreen capabilities so I would assume that those widgets like toggles and brightness settings and sliders and bars would be easily transformed from one device to another. So I reached out to M5 Stack to ask about it and while it's not available right now, they said they're gonna implement that in the new version of the UI flow for M5 dial. So great because 
Now I am even more excited about the p prospect of this device because it's not just thermostat. Remember this? This is an S panel from Sonoff. I'm gonna put more information about this in a corner. This costs around 60 to 70 dollars, which is twice as much as this device, and it offers not that much more. Now, instead of having a panel spending lots of money on that, you can get the M5 dial and put it on your wall. And that way you can design an interface that will allow you to control the thermostat. You can, by a flick of a finger or press of that M5 button, go to a different interface that allows you to turn off and on the lights or control the blinds and do so many different things providing that you are happy to spend time to program them. And I know that might be an obstacle for some, but considering how many people buy these things to start the development from a scratch or put the custom firmware, etc., I don't think this is quite outlandish idea, especially like I am super happy to spend some time and try to do it as soon as I get my own M5 dial, which is going to be probably sometime soon because it's super cool. I think at this point I kind of owe you an explanation. I was using UI Flow, and you're probably wondering what UI Flow is if you never played with M5 stack devices. One of the coolest features of the M5 stack devices is that you can program them from the web browser without using any additional software over the wireless network. Which, well, this device doesn't have a battery built in, like for example the Core 2, but it still, as long as you power it on, allows you to program it wirelessly, and it's one of the most magical things where you can program it on your computer, press the button, and the code magically appear on your device. Now, this is not the only way to program because you can either use the UI flow, which allows you to um, use a block alike code programming, but you can also switch back and forth between that and MicroPython if you prefer to have better control and or if you just know MicroPython very well. Apart from using that, this is also compatible with external IDEs, so M5 Stack provides you with uh, libraries for Arduino IDE and you can easily set this up with something like Visual Studio Code. By the way, there's a hint from me. At the back, I've mentioned there is an M5 stamp, and if you want to burn custom firmware using the M5 stack burner, uh, there is a hidden button underneath the sticker in here, which you have to press and connect, press and hold, and connect your cable to start programming. You'll thank me later. Anyway, I have to take this back to work and give it to the rightful owner, which means soon enough, I'm probably gonna get one of those devices to myself because it's awesome and I definitely want to have it in my collection. Now price-wise I've mentioned that is about half of the price of the NS panel uh, which would put it to less than $35 and honestly for what you're getting at $35 it's a pretty cool little ESP32 based device that you probably won't be able to live without it once you have it. Once M5 stack will add those extra toggles and features to UI flow, I'll be definitely tinkering with my device and try to figure out the best um, kind of firmware I could use with this to integrate it with my smart home. So if you're interested in that and you want to see this in action, I'd recommend you to stick around. You know how YouTube works, you know how my social media works, so yeah, follow me there, guys. As for now, big thanks to Tom from work for letting me uh, abuse his device a little bit. Uh, and uh, experience M5 dial for the first time. So if you're keen to get your own, just head to the description of this video, you're gonna find a link to M5 stack dial and a couple of other M5 stack devices for your viewing pleasures. Thanks so much for watching guys, and I'm going to see you in the next video. Take care, bye.